Good morning, folks. Welcome back to ECMAT. Sorry it's taking so long to get this video up, but I really, you know, upon your request, wanted to get a cat in the background, and he just wouldn't sit down. So I had to wait like two or three weeks. Um, but now we're ready, and so we're going to do the small world uh, test review. There have been a couple changes to the test review form since you got it in class. Um, I'll try to highlight these when we get there, but the most important thing that you need to know, and sometimes some classes we mentioned this in class, some classes we didn't, there is going to be one question from High Dive on this test. And when we make a test cumulative, we want to be completely clear with you what the question is going to be. We don't need you studying all of High Dive, but we do need you to know how to do the question that you see on your screen right now. Uh, it says draw the angle blank in standard position, then find the sine, cosine, and tangent of that angle. So the reason that this angle is blank uh, right now is that we could pick any angle to go here. Any angle as long as that angle is a multiple of 30 or a multiple of 45. So multiples of 30 are like 60, uh, 120, 150, uh, 210, 240, uh, 2300, and 330. Those are the only multiples of 30 we can choose. We're not going to ask you about the weird quadrant angles where it's straight up and down like this. We're not going to ask you about those. This is all we can choose from here. 45, we can choose 45, we can choose uh, 135, we can choose 225, and we can choose 315. And that's it. Of all those angles, today we're going to just randomly sort of select 330 degrees to draw in standard position. So uh, when we draw an angle in standard position, you're going to draw an x and y axis. That's what standard position means, is that like it's on the x and y axis. Standard position also means that the angle starts on the positive x-axis with the initial side. And the angle opens counterclockwise until you've traveled through the amount of degrees it says. So this is 0, this is 90, this is 180, this is 270. You have to know those in order to locate this angle 330. Is it somewhere after 270? How far after 270? Well, we'll figure that out in just a second. Um, but we're just going to kind of draw it out here. There's an angle. Um, we'll label this 330 degrees. Now, we're going to draw a reference triangle with the x-axis. Always with the x-axis. A reference triangle like this. Do not draw your reference triangles with the y-axis. Always with the x-axis. Uh, this is going to be a right triangle. So now I want to know how big this little reference angle inside of this triangle is. Uh, I know that this is 0, it's also 360, so we can do 360 minus 330, and the answer here is 30 degrees. So this reference angle is not question mark, it is 30 degrees. I've done something a little weird here, a little bit on purpose and a little bit on accident, but it's something that you might do on your test too, so I wanted you to see it. Um, what I did was draw the angle before I really knew how big that 30 degrees was supposed to be, so my picture is really, really, really not to scale. Don't trust your eyes. Trust the numbers that you see. In a 30, 60, 90 triangle, across from the 30 has to be the smallest side, and we know in a 30, 60, 90 triangle, that that smallest side is 1. We also know from the picture in the axes that this side is below the x-axis, so we have to label that as negative 1. Across from this 60 degree angle, then we have to have the second biggest side. Not the longest, but the second biggest. So across from this 60, you have to have the side that is square root of 3 units long. Square root of 3 is a number between 1 and 2. So square root of 3 has to be the middle side. I know in the picture it looks like it's the shortest side, but we already identified the angle is 60, and because we know that 60 is more than 30, we know that this root 3 has to be more than 1. Uh, or we know where to put the root 3, because it's more than 1. Uh, I look at the graph and I decide if this root 3 should be positive or negative. This is the positive x-axis, so I'm going to just keep that root 3 as positive. The hypotenuse of this right triangle, right here, is always is two units long, um, and hypotenuses are never negative. That's always positive. I've set up my notation over here, sine, cosine, and tangent of 330. Your notation has to look like this. You have to tell me what angle you're doing, and it has to be the original angle. Not the little 30-degree angle, but the original angle. 
um, because that 330 tells us again what quadrant the whole thing is in. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so that's going to be negative 1 over 2, also known as negative 1 half. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's going to be square root of 3 over 2. Since both sides were positive, this number is positive. Tangent of 330 is going to be opposite over adjacent, so that's going to be negative 1 over square root of 3, which rationalizes to by multiplying by root 3 over root 3 to negative square root of 3 divided by 3. These are the three final answers that we'd be looking for. We're looking for correct notation, we're looking for rationalizing, and we're especially looking for negatives. In addition to all of the uh, correct values, correct picture, uh, all of that. And that's the high dive question. It's not going to be worth 25%, it'll be worth 5 or 10%, but you've got to know it. This is something that you can never, ever, ever forget if you plan on going further on in math, and a lot of you do. All right, now we're back to the real small world content. Um, even though this is a question about diving, this is from Small World because it's about average rates and average change. Uh, so we have a story about a daring diver jumping off of a tall cliff. Uh, we have a function, h of t, that tells us her height from the water. So this is how far above the ground she is. Um, one way that you could investigate this is by making, if you're just like really not sure what to do, you could make an in-out table, like in will be the time, out will be the heights. Um, we're not going to carry through with this table because we're going to jump straight to the mathematics part, the calculations. Um, the average speed, average speed, during the first second after she dives. So this question maybe is a little confusing because it doesn't sound like it's giving you two times. Usually when we're asked for an average, we need two times. But... Uh, during the first second is telling us two times. It's telling us uh, time one, we'll say, is zero seconds, and time two is one second. So we know the times. Now we need to find her height above the water at both of those seconds. Uh, her height above the water at zero seconds, so T1, is just 256 minus 16 times zero squared, or 256. Her height above the water at t2 is 256 minus 16 times 1 squared. Uh, this is, I'm using the equation that was given in the original story that we highlighted. That's how I know where, where those numbers come from. Um, so 256 minus 16 times 0 squared is 240 feet. To find the average speed, Well, speed is distance over time, so we're going to take the change in position. And I'm using the word position here instead of height because, depending on the problem, position could be vertical position like this one. It could be horizontal position. It's basically distance. It's our fancy word for distance over the change in time. Change, that word you see, means subtract. So when we subtract the positions and subtract the times, that will tell us the average speed. When we do this change in position, it's kind of like the slope formula. So and we're going to write this formally as what we call a difference quotient. Difference means subtraction, quotient means divide. So the word difference quotient means we're going to subtract and divide. Uh, so we're going to have f of t2 minus f of t1 over t2 minus t1. That's how we're going to get the change in position and the change in time. So I've kind of got the whole place set. I've got my times. I've got my positions. I've got my equation written down. All we have to do is plug in. Uh, the height at t2 was 240, so that's this 240 is going to go over there. The height at T1 was 256, so 240 minus 256. Uh, time 2 was 1 second. Time 1 was 0 seconds. So this is going to be negative 16 divided by 1, or just negative 16. Uh, and let's look at our units. This was feet because it was the height. This was time. So this is going to be feet per second. 
as her average speed during the first second that she dives. The negative means uh, that it's not that she's going negative speed, she's not going backwards. It means that she, her direction is downwards. In two-dimensional space, you have positive directions, rightward and upwards, and negative directions, downwards and leftwards. Depending on uh, the type of problem, whether you're going up or down or left or right, positive and negative can mean uh, any of those four directions. But that's what the positive and negative is telling you when it comes to speed, is telling you the direction, not the speed. Her speed is 16 feet per second, but the direction is downward. Now we get the really fun one. We need to find her approximate instantaneous speed when she hits the water. Uh, again, we keep using the word approximate because we are doing an estimate here. This is not an exact calculation. Depending on the number of decimal places you use, the number of nines you use, uh, you can get different qualities of approximation. We've decided on a quality of approximation for our purposes, um, but it is an approximation. Uh, instantaneous or approximate instantaneous speed needs one time to start with. And in this problem, it doesn't even look like they gave us a time, except it says when she hits the water. And so the first question is, when does she hit the water? Since this equation uh, right here tells us her height above the water, when she hits the water, that equation will equal zero. Uh, so then you can solve this with algebra. You get 256 equals positive 16 t squared, moving that term over. Uh, we could divide by 16, and we get uh, what we? and we get the t squared is just 16, and then we can take the square root, and we get uh, plus or minus 4 equals t, and, ooh, sorry, that, that. Uh, we get plus or minus 4 equals t, and we know that we're talking about positive time because we're in a word problem story, so we're going to say that 4 is the uh, time that she hits the water. So if we want to find her approximate instantaneous speed, uh, just like when we did an average, we're going to need two times. Time, uh, I'm going to call time 2, 4 seconds. I'm going to call time 1, the instant right before she hits the water. So when she's a tiny, tiny bit above the water, uh, and that is going to be 3.999 seconds. So we went from a situation with one time, four seconds, to now a situation with two times. And we're going to duplicate the calculation that we did uh, in the first problem, where we used change in position over change in time, and did this thing we call the difference quotient, and got an answer. We're going to do the same thing with uh, this time one and time two that just have a little bit grosser of decimals, and that's all we're going to do. Just like before, the next step is finding the height at both of these times. Um, the height at four seconds, we already solved it because we knew four seconds. The way we got it is because that was when the height was zero, so we know that. The height at 3.999 seconds, I can't do that on my head, so you go to your handy-dandy calculator. I happen to have it right here. I've already typed it in. Um, one thing to make sure of is that don't include too many parentheses. Don't square the 16. There's no parentheses around that in the original equation, so don't do it. We're going to hit enter. You're going to get a number, it's .127984. I've set everything up in a difference quotient now. So the approximate instantaneous speed is going to be given by doing f of 4 minus f of 3.999 divided by 4 minus 3.999. Again, the order matters. The, the f of 4 has to be above the 4, and then 3.999 has to be above the 3.999. Uh, if you flip these around, you're going to get the opposite sign, S-I-G, out of the correct answer. Um, so now we plug the numbers from above in. We know what F of 4 is. We know what F of 3.999 is. That's the work we just did. Uh, this is 0 0.001. We're going back to the calculator now. Um, to do the top, you can just do 0 minus and then hit second button and the little answer key. Um, this works all the time, uh, even though this one was kind of easy to see what happens. Um, and then we'll just complete the division. We'll take that answer and divide by 0 0.001, and we get negative 127.984 uh, feet 
per second. Again, the negative means it's going 